Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. So today's video, we are back and better with another unpopular opinions video. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things that have been going on and I have a lot of unpopular opinions to share and to fuck up your day and to basically make your day a lot better. I got to share a lot of opinions that I feel like no one's saying and I got to get a lot of things off my chest that I haven't got off my chest in a very long time. So y'all know the drill, line up, get ready for the unpopular opinions. We're not going to do much talking, we're just going to get right into these unpopular opinions. I do not feel bad for Woe Vicky at all for getting her ass whooped on TV. Now, if y'all didn't know, Baddies, a very popular trash reality TV show that's on the Zeus Network, the cast for the show Baddies was recently announced and several influencers were casted on the show. Even though a whole bunch of raggedy, up-and-coming entertainers and hood boogers and random people who wanted a chance to be on TV auditioned, Natalie Nunn and the producers of Zeus Network chose a whole bunch of influencers and people who were already famous and on other reality TV shows. And they, of course, casted the famous Woe Vicky girl, who we all know for her insane viral videos from five, six years ago. So, of course, they're currently filming as we speak, and Woe Vicky was casted on the show, but she only agreed to do it because, according to her, she wanted to spread the word of God. Now, fortunately for Vicky, she's actually turned her life around. She don't go around saying nigga no more, and she definitely doesn't go around saying she's black. She's apparently turned her life to God, and now she's turned a new leaf spiritually. But so that that's not for me. Uh uh. All that and that and I pray. Um, all y'all watching, if you're living in South, pray you get delivered too. I pray my testimony motivates you. See, he didn't die just for us to. He died for us to enjoy our life too. You know what I'm saying? So if we walk in his will for us then we then we will enjoy our life however as we all know the stuff you do on the internet will follow you for the rest of your life because the internet never goes away and nor does it forget i got a message so i y'all gay ass niggas i y'all puss ass bitches who be talking shit on my comments y'all need to get y'all money up for y'all coming talk shit on my comments because the talk, comment all that shit did that make you win money no but guess what it made me money so guess what y'all niggas need to reevaluate Long story short, they whooped her ass and they beat her ass like a bongo drum and she basically decided to leave the show and press charges after Krishan Rock started throwing stuff at her. Yes, a pregnant Krishan Rock who's on a ratchet reality TV show threw things at her and one of Krishan's friends locked the, the bedroom door so that one of the other friends can run up on her and she was physically assaulted, decided to leave the show and now she's pressing charges on Krishan Rock for physically assaulting her. And it's a shame because this is the same girl who claims that she wanted to get on the show to spread the word of God. To let y'all know, case number, I don't want to go, I don't want to be fighting. I don't want to go because I don't want to be fighting. They said, okay, cool. You don't have to fight. It's not like that. It's not like that. We're trying to change it up. We're trying to change it up. And so I came on that show. Main thing was to spread the light of God, to spread, spread the light of Jesus. And I mean, I feel like I did that. It, it, when y'all see whatever y'all will see. Yeah, so. Why go on a show like that to apparently spread the word of God? I'll tell you why. The root of all evil. She clearly did it for just the money and she got exactly what she signed up for. Blue Ivy is going to be Beyonce's next replacement. She already became the youngest ever Grammy Award winner in history for her song Brown Skin Girl and I feel like Blue Ivy is definitely coming for that throne. I just feel like Blue Ivy is definitely going to be the next big thing. I feel like we're all getting distracted by the Normanis, the Chloe Baileys, the Kalanis, but we don't really realize that Beyonce is technically grooming Blue Ivy and putting Blue Ivy slowly and steadily in our faces before she's heavily pushed on us. Jamie Foxx was never cloned, he's never been cloned, and that was just media, right-wing, conservative propaganda that was being spread, and I really hate that that became a big viral thing. I am so fucking glad that this whole conspiracy theory about Jamie Foxx is over. So if you guys don't know, there was a lot of lingering rumors about Jamie Foxx taking the jab, vaccination. And long story short, because he took the vaccination, a lot of people were going around saying that he's paralyzed from the neck down because he took the vaccination. So a lot of people on the conservative community and a lot of people who are spiritually quote unquote conscious have been speaking out against the vaccination because Jamie Foxx recently was paralyzed, allegedly, and got to a point where he was hospitalized. This insane conspiracy was actually started by AJ Benza, the famous journalist and pop culture commentator who went on a random show called Axe Dr. Drew, and he decided to spread this rumor, and from there, everything started going viral. 
I had somebody in the room who let me know that Jamie had a blood clot in his brain after he got the shot. He did not want the shot, but the movie he was on, he was pressured to get it. This movie he's doing with Cameron Diaz. And I'm thinking, is that why he blew up on the set a week before this medical emergency happened? Is that why he fired three or four people because he just had had it with these mandates? I don't know. But what I found out from the man in the room was that uh, the blood clot in the brain caused him at that point to be partially paralyzed and blind. Because if you read into what they were saying early on, he's communicating with us. That doesn't mean talking. That could be anything. It could be, you know. After many reports made it clear that Jamie Foxx was paralyzed for some odd reason due to some unknown illness, it went weeks going by without us having any update about Jamie Foxx's health, and many of us were honestly concerned. So then Jamie Foxx, months to weeks later, literally got on, and he decided to speak out on social media, and this became global news. I went through something that I, I thought I would never, ever go through. So I didn't want you to see me with a... Uh, with tubes um, running out of me. I did go through, I went to hell and back, and my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well, but um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming back. There's more to the footage, but overall he told people not to worry, that he is very sick, and that he is in better spirits and hopefully on the path of doing better, and will be back to work very soon. But many people still weren't buying it and assumed that this was a clone and not really Jamie Foxx because he does look insanely different. I may have my beliefs about the jab, but it's insensitive. He could be seriously ill and we just not even know it because he didn't tell us anything. And also, let's be realistic for a second. The vaccination, the jab has definitely had an interesting history in terms of triggering people's already conditions that were already there. It's had an interesting history, not just that vaccination, that jab but other jabs in general. And don't hit me with that. It's science, 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 science. Science can suck my fucking ass. You can go to hell with your damn science. I know at the end of the day, science is science, but it is. Ha but it has been known that people have had issues after getting the jab. Just because you ain't, that ain't mean other people haven't. Honestly, I may have my unpopular beliefs and opinions about the vaccination, but at the end of the day, that shit was complete bullshit and nonsense. Everything that we're currently hearing about aerospace and aliens is all an agenda for the rich to pack all they shit and move to a new planet and leave all, all of us here on this decaying planet that's falling apart. Elon Musk and other scientists have been working on this for decades and for all we know, they have already have penthouses, yachts, and private jets all over the planet. But we don't know this because, of course, we're distracted by many things and they claim they're still working on it. Carly Russell deserves the Jesse Smollett treatment and I generally hope she does time in prison for wasting police resources. And as we all know, Carly Russell is the girl, the 25-year-old nursing student who literally sat up there and lied and told a bullshit ass lie to the police and made it seem like she was abducted because she claims in her hometown Birmingham, Alabama that there was a toddler on the freeway. On top of that, she also claims on the freeway she went out of her way to stop but there was no reports of a toddler being on a freeway. There was no video surveillance evidence at all. Turned out she was a big fucking bold faced liar. She made all that stuff up. She left her cell phone behind and she even left her wig behind for a little razzle dazzle. That girl is a clown and she deserves at least a decade in prison. And it's a shame because thanks to TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, her story went viral after people thought that she was genuinely abducted after her 911 call went viral. The entire city went looking for her just for her to randomly wander and walk home, told the police that she was snatched up, snatched up by some man with orange hair, fed cheese crackers, and when no one was looking, she just zoop, ran off. And it's sad because... Not many people will go viral after they go missing. How many other black women or women in general that go missing is snatched up due to human trafficking or due to some psychopath snatching them off the street go missing and we never hear from them again? So many women are currently missing right now, currently locked up, human traffic, probably murdered, if damned if we even know. And Carly Russell told that lie just to find out that the police later looked through her phone. And they found out that she was looking up things such as how to how to steal money from a register, how to get away with, you know, committing a crime and so many other things. The woman's just terrible and she's in, she's fucking insane. And I really hope she gets a mental health evaluation right along with that possible prison sentence. Because as we all know, 
the city of Birmingham, Alabama is looking to charge her, and I'm glad they're doing that. Police, Russell claimed that she was abducted by a man with orange hair and a woman who brought her to a home, forced her to undress, and took nude photos of her. Throughout the investigation, police say they found no evidence of an abandoned toddler, also detailing internet searches made by Russell shortly before the incident, including what's the cost of an Amber Alert, a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville, and the 2008 film about an abduction taken. My client apologizes for her actions to this community. The writer's strike, unfortunately, won't go anywhere. Let's be honest, y'all, this ain't 2005. As we all know, a lot of writers for TV shows and movies are on strike right now because they're sick and tired of being underpaid and not getting residuals for streaming. They were just now starting to get paid for television, but now since all of us are streaming our movies and TV shows worldwide on Hulu, Netflix, Tubi, Peacock, and much more, a lot of these writers are not getting paid residuals for their work. So some of these writers who write these movies and TV shows on streaming platforms are getting probably a couple hundred dollars to maybe a thousand dollars every year, which is nothing because they can't even live off the project they put out. It's mainly the producers, the owners and the executive producers and the major networks who make the most money, all while the writers are getting crumbs. Actors are joining in and it's crazy right now until they all get a livable and fair, sustainable wage to be able to keep doing what they love, which is right. And to be honest, with the way AI is going, I don't know, I, I don't know. This writer strike shit is not really gonna go the way people expect, and it's unfortunate, but I mean, half the shit I see on TV anyways is trash. Let's be realistic for a second. And when was the last time y'all actually full-blown enjoyed a movie that came out in theaters recently? There's not that many. Like, obviously these writers ain't doing something right. I'm just being honest. And realistically, if they do pay the writers more, let's be honest for a second. This literally will affect all of us. A lot of us are not going to be investing in these streaming platforms anymore. I was literally upset recently when Hulu announced that they were raising their prices. Most of us were upset when Netflix announced that they were raising their prices a couple dollars. We got mad when Netflix raised their prices one to three dollars within the past two years. And a lot of us are sitting up here mad at these billion dollar corporations. Yeah, um, that's not how economics work. A lot of us are going to have to pay a little bit more if we want to support these writers. So how would you like it if your Netflix, Hulu, or Tubi cost $60 a month? Hell no, that's literally a month's worth of gas. I don't think so. So overall, I don't think it's going to go anywhere because, again, I'm not trying to pay more for streaming platforms. And if I do, I'll just cancel all that shit and find some way to watch that shit for free. And this may sound kind of fucked up, and I may be going to hell in a handbasket for this, but I actually use a website called showbox.net to watch movies that I don't want to pay for or watch on a streaming platform. So yeah, um, I'm going to put y'all on. Go to showbox.net and use that. No, the same sponsor. This is just where I watch my movies that I can't watch on a streaming platform. We need laws to protect fast food workers. I'm tired of every single year I log on social media and I'm always seeing a vicious video of somebody assaulting a fast food worker or assaulting a cashier. I feel like these fast food workers, they y'all deserve so much fucking respect. And let me tell you this, I used to work at fast food. I used to work at a restaurant called Polo Tropical and I used to also work at a restaurant called Boston Market and I worked at a plethora of other restaurants. Let me tell you this, as fast food workers, I have seen some crazy shit. People throwing fucking condiments at my fucking co-workers. People looking at me stank at the cash register. People having nasty attitudes. People giving me their nasty low vibrational energy. I don't have time for that shit. I feel like fast food workers deserve so much more respect. And it's one thing for people to be rude to them, but it's another thing when people physically assault them and throw shit at them. Hey, can I ask you something by the way? No, it, it's just that every time I come here, like, at the late night hour, I don't know why you're, like, very, like, it's not even me because I know it's not just me. Like, I'm sure you're, like, this way with everyone. You just, like, are very impatient. Like, if, if like, you don't want this job, you don't have to be here. Like, I, I, I'm, d I'm just letting you know. Like, you are, like, you literally rush my order every single time, and I hate having you. And, I, I mean, I'm sure my word means nothing to you, but I'm just telling you. You have the choice to have a different profession. This isn't a profession. I'm sure you're just very incompetent and you have to work here. Matter of fact, my auntie used to work at this bitch. So with that being said, you, you acting funny. You got an attitude. You being rude for what? Somebody answered another car. <laughs> uh -huh. It's all right. What's up? 
What's up? Tell that bitch to come here. Just gonna look. Nah, tell that bitch to come here. She called the police, so. Just tell that bitch to come here. That's in. fine. She bad, right? You bad, right, little mama? She, I you mean, bad, we was all right? listening. Y'all was really loud in our ears. That's okay, all she cool. was trying Climate to tell you. Let. She ain't got to be disrespectful. She, she was just, I don't work Didi. 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 Like that blender lady who got a who, who got a blender to the fucking face because she threw fries and ketchup at a lady. Yeah, I don't I didn't feel bad for that lady and that's where her ass get because you don't throw shit at people. You can't get mad if somebody I can't get mad if I push you and you punch me. It just it's life. So I don't have any sympathy for people who put their hands on fast food workers. I think there needs to be a law that protects fast food workers from any danger, any physical harm. Anyone that puts their hands on a fast food worker with intentional harm needs their ass locked up immediately, ASAP. Lock their ass up and they deserve a hefty fine. Stop putting your hands on these fucking fast food workers and these customer service workers because they're the ones who hold this, who hold this economy together. Colleen Bellinger had a point about cancel culture. Now, as we all know, that annoying ass lady, Colleen Bellinger, who plays that character, Miranda Sings, there were a lot of problematic videos of her doing some really creepy shit during her shows that were resurfacing on the internet. So Colleen Bellinger, as we all know, was a huge star. She even got her own Netflix show way back in 2016. She was huge, really big deal, really successful, made millions of dollars, collaborated with Ariana Grande. She was a huge superstar. However, Colleen Bellinger is a little bit problematic. She literally made a lot of inappropriate and disgusting jokes, even though her fan base are mostly teeny boppers and fetuses. And she did a lot of problematic things with these minors at her show. Porn areas. <laughs> do you bring up the porn and that'll do the trick, okay? So those are the ways to get rid of porn. Do you guys understand porn clothing? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to insert everything, but it's a lot of clips. There's even clips of her spreading some young girl's legs as she's literally on her back on a stage during her tour 10 years ago. Overall, she's disgusting and repulsive, and there's a lot to say about her. But she's a whole other video. But I will say she had a point when she discussed cancel culture and how a lot of it isn't really about accountability. A lot of it is just a whole bunch of people tweeting at the same time just because they're bored and want entertainment. Of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their demise. Yeah. Um, I feel like I can already hear the comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that all of you are perfect, so please criticize. On top of that, she was out here making friends with fucking 14 and 15 year olds and she had them running her fan pages and she was sending them lingerie, well not lingerie, but inappropriate clothing. It was just disgusting. Overall, Colleen Bellinger is problematic as fuck. She did have a point about cancel culture. Cancel culture is bullshit. It's literally just selective outrage and it's literally just like 5, 10, 50 other people tweeting from like multiple different accounts trying to stir some chaos. She had a point and to be honest with you, even though people are dragging her ass, people are going to literally be on her dick again and of course, these sponsorships are going to be rolling down her damn throat in the next couple of months when people forget all about this fuck shit she did. I mean, look at Shane Dawson's punk ass. Look what the fuck Shane Dawson did. Y'all remember when Shane Dawson did fucking blackface and was doing shit like this? So as you guys know, I am Shanene, and this is my home girl, Black as Shit, with a money sign. Now, this is a story all about how my life got twisted upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and tell you how to get the prince of a town called Bel Air. Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, it is me, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. How fly do I look? I mean, really. Look what happened to him. Now he's doing well. Now YouTube now YouTube is pushing his ass through the algorithm. He still gets tons of views and he still has his big ass multi-million dollar home. Cancel culture was valid, but then it lost me when it went corporate. Women need to stop calling men gay just because he pisses you off. It's not appropriate to do that. It's actually very harmful to the LGBT plus community. Just because that man pissed you off and did some shit that you deem as 
feminine and sassy and bitchy. Every state should allow guns and everybody should be allowed to carry a gun because there are some states where you literally can't walk around with a gun on your waist because of course people have this mindset of, oh my God, guns, ill. no, 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 no. And for example, states like California and other liberal states like New Jersey and New York, you can't walk around with a gun. It has to be sealed or unarmed and it has to have no bullets in it or it has to be at your home and it has to be in the glove department. Why the fuck if I'm walking down the street or I'm walking around Central Park or I'm walking around the city, can I carry a gun? You got women out here getting snatched left and right by human traffickers. You got people getting ran up on, people getting like intimidated to join gangs and shit and we can't have guns. First of all, I should be able to blow somebody's fucking head off if they fucking try me or test me or they try to come anywhere near me and do some shit to me. At the end of the day, every state should allow guns and guns are a good thing because I've said this once and I'll say it again. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. People who are hoping for another COVID-19 shutdown and global shutdown are fucking weird. So it's been a common thing on social media lately for people to say, yes, yes, let's be all shut down again. You know, we can get these stimmies, we can get these stimulus checks, we can get this assistance check because it's hard out here. Um, Y'all do realize that a lot of y'all wishing for a shutdown are affecting your favorite mom and pop shops? Because let's be honest for a second, how many of your favorite restaurants aren't coming back or did not come back after the global shutdowns and the pandemic? If another shutdown happens, restaurants get affected all because you want another assist, a governmental assistant check. Nope, mm -mm, nope, don't need another shutdown. A shutdown, shutdown has literally affected so many people. A lot of people were so desperate that they literally went the route of OnlyFans. Nope, I'm not feeling that at all. If you're wishing for another shutdown, you're weird as fuck. If Bad Girls Club comes back to television, I will literally never, ever, ever acknowledge anything involving Zeus Network, ever. Elon Musk is doing a great job with Twitter. Good job, Elon Musk. Now people can get the fuck off of that platform and stop reading fake news, cringe-worthy headlines, or stop running to that platform to cancel people. I also love the fact that Elon Musk is now adding a feature where you can only read like 10,000 tweets a day or 1,000 tweets a day if you're not verified. Because now it'll limit everyone's screen time and people can spend less time on on Twitter now that Elon Musk is making some changes such as limiting people's screen time. Good job Elon. <laughs> Keep up the good fucking work and at the end of the day fuck Twitter I'll just find something else to go on. Threads is extra as fuck. It's funny how that was such a big trendy thing and then eventually people just stopped using Threads. Doja Cat is incredibly nasty for the way she's been speaking to her fans lately and honestly Doja Cat is a complete asshole. I feel like she's going through a mental health crisis and I feel like she's going through something really deep that most of us will never be able to truly understand. Now my effort, I guess it's a, it's a two way street. Maybe it's 50-50, right? I work my ass off, y'all buy tickets. I make music, y'all shake ass. But we don't have to be friends, bitch. <laughs> I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. I want you to know that I'm gonna solidify that right now. I am not your friend and I am not your mentor. No, no. I can't stress that enough. Why do you think I don't come? I don't go on Twitter anymore. I don't go on any of this shit because I don't, <laughs> I come back just to shame you all. When I go on Twitter, it's shame time. When I come on here, it's fuck you. When I go on Instagram live, it's you. I don't like this shit anymore because y'all suck. And this isn't my miserable era. This is my liberated era. And you can suck my from the back, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'm still gonna listen to her music though because separate the art from the artist. Riverdale should have been canceled years ago. I'm surprised people still watch that shit and I'm surprised that it's still on air. Toni Braxton is literally one of the greatest vocalists who ever lived. Her debut album, for those of y'all who don't remember, literally sold millions and half of her first album were big back-to-back -back hits. Toni Braxton does not get enough credit from the culture for what she did for music and her impact in, on pop culture. That album sold tens of millions of records and it's really insane to me that Toni Braxton doesn't have a Hollywood star. And it's honestly low-key insane how we don't really see murals of Toni Braxton, just like how we see murals of like Aaliyah and Nas and how we see major murals of Kanye and how we see people's faces such as, you know, big entertainers like Outkast. Like, why don't we ever see Tony Braxton's face everywhere? Why is Eminem and all these people always on t-shirts, 
but we don't ever see Tony Braxton everywhere. I feel like Tony Braxton is one of those people where we're gonna miss her when she's gone. The Paul Brothers and Family Channels are what killed YouTube. So at one point, YouTube was insanely entertaining. It was like every week we were all invested into some crazy chaos or drama or some interesting entertainer. But then when the people like Chris and Queen came along, Dumbo and Krusty, Dick and Balls Nation, when they came along and they bought their bullshit onto the platform and did all these fake lick my poom poom pranks or finger my kitty cat prank or almost bought a period blood prank, all, all these dumb ass ridiculous pranks, they're kind of what killed the platform. Same thing with the Paul brothers. You know, we wonder why YouTube is so heavily censored where now when you post a comment, you're constantly told that you have to be careful what you type so that way, you know, it won't trigger something in the community guidelines. You know, not only are influencers and YouTubers and video makers being censored, but y'all are being censored too for commenting what the fuck you want to be want to comment on. Like there's times where people will literally think that I'm deleting their comment and I'm like, no, I'm not deleting your comment. It's just you're using certain trigger words that will literally like trigger the algorithm and then your comment will get shadow banned or automatically deleted or thrown in my spam folder or whatever the fuck folder so yeah the paul brothers and family channels y'all can blame them they did this shit like them prank them pranksters those family channels the paul brothers they did all this stuff they made their millions they fucked up the platform and they're a reason why a lot of people are fucking tired of youtubers and influencers because people think of that we're all just like these big-headed rich people that just you know think that we're egocentric and love to flex and shit like they've created a bad connotation and now youtube has pretty much punished them and that's why YouTube doesn't really push any new YouTubers anymore. You know, it's very rare for me to find a new upcoming YouTuber in my recommendations. Every time I get a YouTuber recommended to me, they're just a YouTuber that already has thousands of views, thousands of followers. I never really get, you know, Samantha or Shaniqua or Brian or Kevin or Kelvin or Jose or uh, Tiana or Tatiana from around the corner in my recommendations anymore. I'm getting people who are already established influencers, which is so weird because YouTube is sick of all these new people just blowing up out of nowhere and doing fuck shit so it's out of the algorithm and youtube loves you or they don't and youtube only likes particular content and it has to be content that's you know disney channel friendly or content that they think is bearable for the platform i'm gonna say this for everybody in the back including your ass don't believe the lies that the media is telling you about Mexico. Warning tonight for anyone with plans to travel to Mexico. The State Department has issued a travel warning advising Americans to avoid Mexico. Officials say violence in those areas is on the rise. Maybe it's because we hear about Americans going there and getting kidnapped or getting terrible food poisoning. This lady is selling all grasshoppers. Or we watch shows about the corrupt narco states that are run by drug lords. A wise woman once said, there's no substitute for the truth. Either it is or it isn't. And in this case, there's a little bit of truth in the whole Mexican cartels and the Mexicans, you know, terrorizing tour. There's some truth to it. A lot of times these Americans are looking for trouble and a lot of times people end up being in bad situations. There's some truth to it, but it's not the entire place. That's like people saying America is 100% dangerous, but then there's people over here in places like Minnesota, places like Idaho, places like Delaware or Connecticut where the crime is relatively low. Mexico is an amazing place. Dr. Sabi said it the best. Mexico is the shit. Don't listen to what none of the media says. I know a lot of people have been trying to cancel Mexico lately because of what they've been seeing as far as like, you know, unfortunately involving the Shaquille Robinson situation and a lot of people getting kidnapped in Mexico and the cartel people, you know, harassing tourists. Please be mindful that everything you're hearing about Mexico is something you would literally hear in Eastern Europe or some shit you would literally hear in mostly America. There's danger everywhere, and I refuse to let westernized media destroy Mexico for me because I was going there before all the chaos and all the crazy shit that you see on the news popped up. And even back before then, you know, Mexico has always been demonized, but Mexico is a gem. And again, there's danger everywhere, but please practice common sense. A lot of people don't practice common sense, or a lot of people, unfortunately, just end up in bad situations. Be cautious and just watch your bag, just like you would in any major city or any major area where you know a lot of people don't even know who you are so please just practice caution when you go to a country like that or any country in general some people unfortunately just ended up in a bad situation because they just end up in a bad situation but please just use caution when you go but it's a great country and i really want more people to see it and there's a lot of areas you don't have to go to tulum or cancun 
I promise you, you can get snatched up and kidnapped by drug lords and kidnappers and killers and drug dealers in America or in your backyard before it'll even happen to you in Mexico. Yes, the police are corrupt, but the police aren't corrupt in westernized society. Don't believe the shit they tell you about Mexico. Go see Mexico for yourself. I love Mexico. I've been to Mexico numerous times. Everything is so fucking affordable. $4 cocktails, $3 cocktails. Everybody's mad chill, very friendly, very nice. The people are mad laid back. The food is well seasoned, nice and right. The food is real spicy. Don't believe the shit they tell you about Mexico. Go to Mexico. Don't fucking go to Miami. Don't go to the Bahamas. Go to Mexico. Mexico is a hidden gem and they just don't want you to know about it. It's even easy to literally migrate from the US to Mexico. Like Mexico has so much shit and Mexico is fucking huge. There's so many fucking regions and areas of Mexico that are more than just Tulum or Cancun. Mexico is popping and I'm going to continue to go to Mexico and anyone that doesn't want to go to Mexico and feels like Mexico ain't shit and that people shouldn't go to any go there anymore can suck my ass. I will still be going to Mexico and I think you should too. It's a great ass fucking place to go. I'm a Virgo on Amazon Prime is an amazing show and I highly recommend it. When I say I want to see something new, edgy, and fun, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. If you haven't watched I'm a Virgo on Amazon Prime, y'all better go watch that shit or find some website where they can where you can watch it for free. I'm a Virgo is lit as fuck. I love that movie. I love the show. It's a, it's a new show starring Jarell Jerome. And if you haven't seen it and want something that's going to mind fuck you, please watch I'm a Virgo. Everyone does not need a podcast. Some of y'all don't have shit to talk about and that's why your favorite influencers start a podcast and quit after 20 episodes or quit after like a year. I kind of feel bad for listening to Aaliyah's music on streaming platforms because as we all know, Aaliyah's music wasn't on streaming platforms for a whole fucking decade. And now that it's released, her evil and conniving uncle now benefits off of the streams financially all while her estate, aka her brother and her mom, who actually gave a fuck about her and has fought for her legacy numerous times, literally get nothing. Even though they've been keeping her name alive and fighting to protect her legacy from years. I, I do kind of feel weird about listening to Leah's music on streaming platforms. But hey, separate the art from the conniving evil uncle. The TV series The Game should have kept the fucking reboot. So this may mindfuck a lot of people, but... I don't think airlines should accommodate fat people. And by that, I mean this. So if y'all didn't know, there's been a recent controversy when a woman recently did an interview and several other fat women did interviews where they talked about how airlines don't provide enough space for fat people and plus size people. Things I will never do again as a plus size traveler. Being scared to ask for a seatbelt extender and sacrificing my comfort. Book a middle seat on a plane they are the worst for plus size travelers. Try to make myself as small as possible even though I'm a paying customer. Sit in a seat where the armrests don't raise and leave with bruises from the seat. Stuff myself into the tiny airplane bathrooms. Laughing off the comments that are actually rude about being a plus size traveler. Not bringing my own towel and only being able to cover a third of my body. Waiting to take a trip until I lose weight. So you want to hear my hot take on plus size travel and why I think every plus size traveler should get a free second and even third seat on an airplane? Then you better keep watching and sign my petition to make some real change. Let's just state facts. Plus size travelers need more space. And many people agree that plane seats are too small, even for the average size person. As a plus size traveler myself, I know how uncomfortable and unsafe it can be to squeeze into a tiny airplane seat. We are not asking for special treatment or luxury accommodations. We simply want enough space to travel comfortably and safely without fear of being discriminated against because of our size. It's truly that simple. If you agree that every traveler deserves to fly comfortably and without fear of discrimination, then go ahead and please sign my petition and share it with everybody that you know. Let's work together to make air travel more inclusive and accommodating for everyone. First on my list of plus size friendly airlines to fly in 2023 is Southwest Airlines. They offer plus size passengers or passengers of size as they call it, a free second seat, or they will reimburse you if you decide to pay for your second seat ahead of time. This is why people look at America as one big fat ass fucking joke. A fat ass obese ass joke. This is why right here. People think America's a fucking joke because of shit like this and it's unfortunate. And I feel as though that if you don't get your big ass on that fucking treadmill, I don't know what to tell you. 
I don't think airlines should accommodate people. And if you feel some type of way, then bitch, pay for first class. If Travis Scott was not connected to Kylie Jenner or the Kardashian hoes, he would literally be blackballed for his whole Astro World debacle that happened roughly almost two years ago. Coco Jones deserves every bit of success she gets and 10 times more. Not, a, not enough people know her name and that's a problem for me. And it's crazy because she's had a really rough journey from being on Disney Channel, from singing, from not having much money to trying to thrive in Los Angeles and from trying to build her legacy and empire from since she was 12 years old. And now she's in her late 20s and is now seeing the fruits of her labor. And it's really unfortunate that it's just not happening for her despite her talent and the work and effort she's put in throughout the years. The older I get, the more I realize where our grannies, aunts, or mothers stayed in abusive and toxic ass relationships. And honestly, I don't blame the asses. Some people are just bored and enjoy the, the, the rush of, you know, chaos or enjoy the rush of having somebody that's fun and a good time and make sure that they're stable financially or having someone that gives them a good dicking or funds for their lifestyles. Relationships are virtually a business and a partnership. So at the end of the day, I get why a lot of people don't marry for love anymore. A lot of our grannies weren't deeply in love with our grandpas. Let's be honest. Your daddy probably cheated on your mom or your grandpa probably cheated on your granny. Your granny probably got cheated on like 50 times or your granny was probably getting ran through by like 50 other dudes all while grandpa was like trying to keep the peace together in the household. So I understand why people stay together because sometimes it's just convenient. Nobody wants to have to start over. My final unpopular opinion is this. AI is one of the most evil inventions ever created and I feel like it'll be the downfall of society, but damn, that shit is a really fucking good idea. AI, at the end of the day, is gonna be the reason why a lot of us destroy one another. It's gonna be the reason why a lot of us end up being very lazy and dependent on the government because of robots who take care of everything. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave all of us some form of universal basic income to incentivize communism and make all of us rely on AI. You know, why, you know, a lot of us are already complaining about how expensive things are and how hard life is and how much we have to work because none of us like to work hard. But realistically, a lot of this AI shit that's going to come into fruition because of how stressed out we are and, you know, this whole bullshit that happened because of the pandemic and everybody being out of work and everybody not getting paid as much as they should be getting paid. People are fed up. And I wouldn't be surprised if all these major governments said, hey, it's okay, we'll just give you AI. You know, we'll let AI do the work and you can stay home and we'll give everybody a paycheck every single month to stay home and rely on AI to do half the work. I wouldn't be surprised if they encourage us to rely on AI to make life easier for us. And most of us will sit up here and say, oh no, we would never, we would never as a society follow through with that. But most of us would if it meant making our lives easier. So let's be realistic. Most of us know AI is an evil agenda, but it's a great idea because first of all, I recently paid AI a couple dollars to retouch and polish my resume just to see, and that shit came out amazing. AR, AI cars are already taking over. AI photographers are taking over. AIs are writing essays. AIs are virtually controlling fast food restaurants. AIs are controlling Asian restaurants. AIs are all over airports. It's just... It's a necessary evil that's eventually going to be incentivized and married into society. No matter what country or world you live in, a lot of us are going to eventually give in to make the world easier. But I was that for this Unpopular Opinions video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys see where I'm coming from. Hope you guys enjoyed this overall Unpopular Opinions video. Please be sure to let me know what you guys thought about this. Please be sure to let me know your Unpopular Opinions in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's that. Like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the music. Choice out this bitch. You will always be, always be. I say fire to the rain. Watch it burn. I run away. I run in the dark. And I say fire to the rain, watch it burn.
I set fire to the rain. That's all y'all get for free, and I don't even know the lyrics. Y'all have a good one.